What's up again, everybody? Welcome back to the best of my recollection. I'm your host and storyteller, Michael Eric O'Reilly. And today's story is about four different times I've seen Jack White in person. Two of those times he was on stage, the other two times he wasn't. Now, I'm the same exact age as Jack White. We were both born in 1975. And when I was in high school, uh, I remember going up to Pontiac, Michigan, with the Phoenix Center, it was an outdoor venue on top of a parking structure. And I went there to see two bands. One was a ska band called Gangster Fun, and the other band was Goober and the Peas. Now, Goober and the Peas was an interesting act. They were kind of a country, punky, punk tree band, you might call them. But anyway, Jack White was the drummer of that band. I don't know if he was their main drummer or whatever, but... And then just maybe a year or two after high school, I went to a party in Royal Oak and at a guy's house who he was friends with Meg White. I remember going downstairs and seeing Jack and Meg practicing. It didn't really mean anything to me at the time. I didn't even know it was the White Stripes practicing until a long time after, probably a couple of years later, somebody told me that. The next time I ran into Jack White, it was at the Star John R. Movie Theater, right after the White Stripes really blew up and they were really getting famous on the covers of magazines, on tour all over the place. Anyway, I was at the movie theater. I went out to get some popcorn in the middle of the movie and I'm standing in line there and there's like like a pole like this big around right here. And um, Jack is on the other side of the pole and he's in line in a different line to get his popcorn. And there was a bunch of people around and stuff. And I looked over at him and, and he knew that I knew who he was. And he was just like giving me this look like, don't even ask me for my autograph or anything like that. Give me a really cold look. This was at the time I think he was going out with uh, Renee Zellweger. Now around that same time, I was playing in a couple different bands in the Detroit area and I was playing in a band called Mazinga. The original drummer from Mazinga is Don Blum, and he uh, was playing in the Von Bondies at the time I was in Mazinga. And of course, Jack and Meg uh, took the Von Bondies on tour with them, at least one world tour. That's my only loose musical connection with Jack White is that he went on tour with a drummer who was in a band that I ended up being in, whatever. Like I said, I'm a big White Stripes fan. I like some of Jack's solo stuff. I like the rock on tours. So the only other time I've seen Jack White on stage, besides when he was playing drums with Goober and the Peas, was pretty recently, maybe a year and a half ago, at Little Caesars Arena in Detroit. Jack was just playing his uh, solo act, and the band that opened for him was Negative Approach. And John Brandon is the front man of Negative Approach. That's a great band. And I'm going to do a whole separate, whole separate episode about Negative Approach and Easy Action and John Brandon. But that was actually one of the main reasons we went to this show. It was me and Pete, uh, the singer for High Totals. We went there and we sat in the very highest, farthest possible seat from the stage. You know, I could barely see Jack White. And the sound actually pretty much sucked. Well, it was still fun to see him. He's a great guitar player, great songwriter. We got free tickets, whatever. Now, one interesting thing about the White Stripes and Von Bondi's connection is the incident between Jack White and Von Bondi's singer, Jason Stolsteimer. Now, the story goes, they had some problems uh, on tour. I don't really know what the details were, but at some point... They were in Detroit, and Jason Stolsteimer was at the Magic Stick. And I, I don't know if the Von Bonnies were playing that night, but he was in the crowd watching a band. Jack White came in. He walked upstairs. He found Jason Stolsteimer in a big crowd of people, punched him in the face, and then turned around and walked out. There wasn't any kind of charges filed or anything like that, and which leads me to believe that Jason Stolsteimer may have done something to deserve it. But Jack White is also kind of a hothead. He's pretty tall, he's pretty intimidating, and he's gotten in a lot of fights in his life. He's not afraid to punch guys in the face. I don't know, but he is a good songwriter, good guitar player. He also knows how to do upholstery. That's my story for today. Thanks for checking out the best of my recollection. Tune in next time for another great story.